Good morning and hello to all. I am Dr. Juhi Poreja, currently an R1 resident in radiology department of MP Shah Government Medical College, Chamnagar from Gujarat. And today I am going to present a case series on hydrated cyst and its various locations. The aim of my study is to demonstrate various typical and atypical locations of hydrated cyst using ultrasound as a modality. Introduction Zoonotic diseases are the diseases that spread from animals or insects to humans. One such zoonotic disease, a kinococcosis or hydatidosis as we know it, is one of the most important diseases which occurs in different parts of India our country being endemic to it. Liver is the most common location of the hydrated cyst followed by the lung, with the approximate occurrence rate of 70 and 12% respectively. This is the pie chart showing the localization of hydrated cyst. Majority of the cysts are encountered in the liver, but it does not make up the entirety as lung, spleen, cerebrum and other sides of the body, though in less numbers, are also prone to hydrated cysts. The life cycle of hydrated cysts goes as follows. Dogs or other carnivores are the definitive host of the cyst from which the embryonated eggs are laid out in the feces. Such eggs are ingested by herbivores such as sheep which form the intermediate host. Cysts in this are formed in lung and liver of the intermediate host and after which the intermediate hosts are eaten again by the carnivores, continuing the cycle. Among this, humans are the accidental, incidental, dead end host of the hydrated cyst. Accidental in the sense that it is not necessary nor included in the conventional life cycle of hydrated cyst and we may get infected through the feces or saliva of definitive host such as dog through direct infection. Humans are dead-end hosts in the sense that the infection is not transmitted from humans to other humans and the cyst cycle ends in human itself. Materials and Methods Machine used for my study is Samsung RS80 EVO Curvilinear Pro, the ultrasound machine of our institute. The methodology of my study goes as follows. Patients referred to us from surgery department for ultrasonography for various abdominal complaints underwent routine ultrasonography. Three patients were diagnosed with hydrated cyst in different locations and findings were conveyed to surgery department for further management. The results of my study were as follows. The first patient had a well-defined thick wall cystic lesion with internal septas and echos and left lobe of liver thus liver hydrated. In second patient, thin wall well-defined cystic lesions with internal calcific foci and ecogenic sand were seen in splenic parenchyma, thus making the diagnosis as splenic hydrated. And the third patient had multiple well-defined thin wall cystic lesions with internal floating ecogenic membrane and various stages of cysts were encountered in peritoneal cavity thus peritoneal hydratidosis. The discussion goes as follows. Case 1. 55-year male, livestock breeder by occupation, came with complaint of epigastric pain and vomiting since 15 days. Findings on sonography were as follows. A well-defined thick-walled cystic lesion with internal septas and echos was seen in left lobe of liver. Classical liver hydrated. Another classical appearance seen in liver hydrated is the crumpled membrane or the water lily sign encountered frequently in many cases. Case 2. An 18-year male came with complaint of left-sided flank pain since 15 days. He had a history of close contact with domestic fauna. Findings on sonography were as follows. Well-defined cystic lesion with internal calcific foci and ecogenic sand was seen in splenic parenchyma. Case 3. A 58-year-old female came with complaint of right hypochondriac pain and episode of vomiting 
since two years. Findings on sonography were multiple well-defined thin wall cystic lesions with internal ecogenic floating membrane in peritoneal cavity were encountered. Another lesions at different stages of life cycle such as this cyst without any membrane or ecogenic content in this cyst were also encountered. Thus concluding my study, the hydrated cyst can present in any part of the body and no site is immune. These unusual locations often produce non-specific symptoms. Consequently, it is advisable to have a high degree of suspicion to consider hydrated cyst in the differential diagnosis of cystic lesions found anywhere in the body, especially in endemic countries such as ours. The following are the references used for my study. Thank you.